My name's Billy Windows. Uh, for the last 15 years, I've been cleaning windows down here. 15 years ago, purely by chance, one of a friend who was working on the stall said that um, there was a job two days a week cleaning windows. So I followed uh, old Mickey around for two weeks. He taught me the ins and outs of it. Um, I was 23 when I started doing it, so I had a bit more energy. Within six months, I had five days a week from it. Never more than 10 minutes away from a job, so I have a lock-up down here. Uh, all my gear's down here, and it's a, it's, it's a community. Mickey's still alive? Mickey is, he is, yeah. He's chairman of the Retired Boxing Association. Unfortunately, he's got Alzheimer's, but he's still got a hand grip like a fucking clap. <laughs> changes have been drastic, you know, it's always individual traders selling to individual traders, now it's big corporations, so the trade amongst each other is, is not as great anymore, people are just flocking out and blue chips moving in. My name is Paul Burfoot, I am the owner of Fish Hair Shop in Soho, London, which I have been for the last 28 years. An amazing square mile of, of London. Colourful, vibrant, passionate, so much to do, so much to see, um, but unfortunately times are changing. And for me personally, for the worse, you know, it won't be long before it is another Covent Garden. Um, it's heartbreaking, you know, it's, it's people coming in, underhanded councils, profit, faceless property developers, and it's people like myself, the one-off shops, which give Soho its identity, that are having to move out. It's, it's, it's crazy, and, and, and we are the foundation, or part of the foundation, of why Soho is what it is. Um, but we're still here, and uh, we're still doing what we do and uh, long may it rain. I am Pat Lundy. Um, I play drums for Mozart and I've been coming to Soho for about 15 years. And Soho, for me, as a kid growing up in London, is just a, like, a big mixing pot of madness. Like, only London has one really, all the other Soho's are, are a copycat so do you get me? So oh, standard. I just remember that it's a British thing. But... <laughs> My name is Michael Payne. I am a musician and songwriter and artist manager. I've been frequenting Soho for about, coming up to 10 years now. My Soho is super liberal. Um, you know, there's, there's the obvious, you know, gay and lesbian community and super creative. You know, the multiculturalism, you've got, you've got like loads of tourists, you've got, you know, the Chinese community. Like I said, you've got the gay and lesbian community. And just if you're an open-minded person, then yeah, Soho's definitely the place for My name's Kieran O'Brien. <laughs> Look, I'm laughing already. How long have we been in Soho? Bloody hell. Uh, Kieran O'Brien, I'm an actor and I've been coming to Soho since I was 15, 25 years ago. Can you define your Soho? Mischief. <laughs> um, I actually lived above the Toucan for eight months. I didn't get any work while I was living here. Um, so that wasn't the best plan of action. Um, so I love it. I'd love it since the, the excitement of, of reading Jeffrey Bernard's book, um, just the one, uh, The Wives and Times of Jeffrey Bernard. Jeffrey Bernard is, is a Soho 
hero from days gone by over in the coach and horses. And uh, seeing all the places that he used to hang out and, uh, and then doing the same myself. And I always got served because I had fake ID. So that was all very exciting, coming down for auditions from Manchester. Um, so so uh, much to the dismay of uh, close family is everything to me. Benjamin, and uh, I'm a DJ. I've been coming to Soho, not too long I've been coming to Soho, but I like this place, man. You can be yourself here. It's just free, I guess. That's what. That's the vibe I'm getting. It's, it's just free, and you know, no one's, you do what you want here. There's some weird places, though. I've been to some weird nightclubs there. I'm not gonna lie, I've seen some strange things. I once saw a Chinese midget dressed as Prince sing Purple Rain, and then take a piss into a champagne glass and drink it. And that's the truth. <laughs> that's, that's, hey, man. <laughs> I just go where they pay me. <laughs> My name's Pete Voss. I have a company called Voss Belts. Um, I made leather belts. Um, I've been coming to Soho since 1984 when I was 14 and uh, used to go to the WAG on Wardour Street, Whiskey Go Go and used to, so being a club kid was for me where it was at. Eventually got into me, my own music going on called Camp Bank Bella Set and I had that band for 11 years. We I'm Chris Dostelera, um, I'm an artist, I'm a painter, I do bits of acting and um, that's it. I've been many things, uh, but essentially, yeah, I, I, I'm an artist really. Um, it's kind of a broad ranging term. I'm an artist who does bits of showing off and pretending to the other people for money. That's what I do. Look, the reason so I was had anything creative about it, like any area, is because people who were creative and were doing things that were more interesting could afford the rent. I mean, Soho was a sanctuary. There wasn't, there weren't marauding gangsters everywhere. They kind of do their own thing. So there, to a certain extent, you know, we can glamorise it and go, oh yeah, well, you know, they only did it to their own and all that. And you know, it's not particularly pretty. But I wasn't involved in that. So I never, ever, not even for one minute, felt threatened in Soho in the same way I felt threatened for dressing in a certain way just literally three minutes up the road on Oxford Street, which was dangerous. You couldn't go into normal pubs, you couldn't go to places. Soho was a, like I said, Soho was a sanctuary for misfits. I've always believed that where there's commerce, there's compromise, and compromise is the enemy of creativity. I've worked in Soho for about five years at the Great Frog. Um, I started as a shop girl, but now I work in the basement making the drink. I don't know, I came and I stayed and I don't really want to leave. <laughs> um, it's just a creative hub. Um, you can find the right people to do whatever you want to do. You just have to have the idea to do it. Hello, my name is Grant Gillespie. I'm a writer and actor and screenwriter, and I'm a Soho resident and have been a Soho resident for the last eight years. Soho is kind of old school creativity and debauchery, and it's the pleasure principle. So it's a square mile of any anything goes. And so, like uh, Soho for me, there was a you hear all these amazing snippets of people's lives. You see the crack whores and the and the, you know the, the eccentrics that are going by with like a bird on their shoulder and all that stuff and I heard this pimp saying to this American guy and he was like and he said so what are you looking for you're looking for girls or guys and the guy went oh yeah girl yeah definitely oh hang on no no definitely girls yeah and I was like that Soho where you go oh maybe I'll do something a bit out of the box oh no no I'll do, I'll do with what I'll do with what I know uh, 
so yeah, that's, that's, that's why I love it. Yeah. It was the first place I came when I was a kid uh, to London and it was going to sort of sort of Berlin type bars and thinking oh this is this is where I want to be when I grow up drunk in this place and I always said I want to live in Soho and all my friends were like yeah fuck off so do we it's never gonna happen and it has so fuck off to you <laughs> I'm the head chef at Bax, uh, I've been now for about a year. So I'm coming in around Soho for probably the past 10 years, ever since I moved to London from Essex, sort of pursue the cooking career and that. Um, I've worked in Soho, out of Soho and in around, but it's always it's always a good place to come and uh, late night if you're a chef and you finish service and you need somewhere to hang out, it's always been one of those sort of places. Yeah, for me, it's definitely late nights, bars and very, very random, random people. No. I kind of like the, it's a bit, no, no rules, no holes barred, yeah. everything's okay as long as you're not upsetting anyone else. Like, uh, that's kind of my side of what I like. Right. <laughs> My name is uh, Steve First. I'm a, an actor, a comedian. Uh, I was once a promoter, a bit of a DJ, and uh, Soho is, is all too familiar to me, be it that building there, which is the Groucho Club, or the French House there, or many of these beautiful buildings. Soho is both work and play, and pleasure. It's always it's both, both things together, entwined, a potpourri mixed together, a melange, a, a, a diverse, um, sometimes extreme opposites coming together. I had an office up the road which was also a flat, so it's been everything over the years, really. Uh, Daniel Sapiano, I've been working in Soho about 20 years, uh, working advertising. My Soho, I mean, it's, it's one Soho by day, one Soho by night. I do have a go-to, the pub sort of generally, Dean Street. Uh, a lot of the pubs I used to go to aren't there anymore, which is a real shame. Just went to the Endurance last week and it's now some, I don't know what it is really, health spa restaurant, I can't tell the difference to be honest with you. Duck and wafer, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, so that, that's, that's a shame, a lot of the pubs, old pubs are selling up and getting redeveloped and there's restaurants or flats. Um, and that's, that's sad. You are seeing change. Absolutely, day by day. day. Look around. Look around, people. Look around. There's cranes everywhere. Nothing against redevelopment and, and moving things forward, but there's always a price to pay. And as long as the people doing it are actually thinking about what they're doing, that's all, that's all, that's all we ask for. Um, I'm Matthew Sim, or Matt. Matt Sim, as everyone in Soho knows me. Um, been coming to Soho as long as I can remember, probably since the, I don't know, late 70s. Um, uh, going to places like Pat Vale's, Petite Valerie, and Centrale, which is a sort of pasta joint on Moore Street, which is now defunct. Um, yeah, I've always gravitated to Soho and uh, started working in Soho about, about sort of probably eight years ago when I, when I worked here. And I just always gravitate to it, I and mean, it became a sort of the gay sort of village in I suppose the 80s mm. after Earl's Court and then that gay village moved to Vauxhall and Newcastle's a gay village now isn't it? Newcastle isn't it? <laughs> 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 I think it's, so it's going to become you know like Covent Garden became I hate Covent Garden the, 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 the so marketplace you know it's like the sort of theme park yeah. and that's what I think will ha might happen to so it's become like a theme park you know, people can get cobbled over and Invaded by chains and Berwick Street. Street, exactly. Yeah, it's going to have all those great individual traders and market and what makes it such a vibrant place. Uh, my name's Doug Allen, and uh, I'm an actor. 
and I've been coming to Soho for 30 years. <laughs> There's a lot of you know, a lot of production houses, a lot of casting agents here, so I spend a lot of time in Soho. Industry-wise? Yeah, industry-wise, yeah, yeah. It's sort of a, a real good hub for it. And, and so, obviously, you see them all out, you see them in the pubs and the Nelly Dean and the Groucho and places like that, so it just becomes... It just becomes part of your life. It can really easily suck you in. I mean, there, there was, for a good 20 years, all my friends were working or, you know, in, in one establishment or another along here. So for me, it was really Dean Street. Dean Street was all my sort of places. The Nelly Dean, I used to go to the Groucho, um, used to go to um, Sunset Strip. <laughs> if I got drunk enough, um, that's my excuse anyway. You know, I still, you know, you go into the French house and you see, you know, photograph of Francis Bacon in there and stuff. And he, he, he was standing at the bar, an empty bar as well. He was standing there on his own. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just great. It's great. I absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. BB does so With BB Lynch. My name is Bibi Lynch. I host a show on Soho Radio called Bibi Does Soho. And I've been coming to Soho since, or hereabouts, since I was about eight, because my mum's family um, lived above Frank's Cafe on Neil Street. So I know it's not technically Soho, but it's as close as you need. Yeah. So I've been here for a long time. Soho for me is that, um, kind of London plus the, the extra, the magical extra that makes London the best city on earth. I lived out of London for a year and um, and Soho, like, you know, Patisserie Valerie and the French House and Groucho's and Ronnie's and, and just the energy and just and the people was what made me have to come back home. And what is it, do you, do you have a go-to? What's your go-to? Um, well, Soho Radio now, is that really bad to say? No, it's very <laughs> like, um, no I love it here. I love, I love that it's it's nearly a year old and I think it's already part of Soho. And it's it's supposed to be a community station and it really is. And on my show, I'm interviewing, my favourite guests are people that have got a Soho story or a premise in Soho. And um, Soho Radio now has made me part of the Soho community. And I love that. <laughs> I'm Lois, aka Halo. I'm a techno DJ and digital filmmaker. My name's Clayton Littlewood. I am an author of a couple of books about Soho. Fantastic. One called Dirty White Boy Tales of Soho, and the other one called uh, Predicting the Future Goodbye to Soho. <laughs> I can see it going on there, and, and a few of the the famous faces of Soho were dying at that point. Some of the famous places were going back then. So the Colony, the Mermaid Club, uh, the brothels on Peter Street, uh, people like Sebastian Horsley, Michael from the Colony. Uh, so there was a, a slow death of Soho was already happening. with a lot of filth, <laughs> but um, very vibrant, I love it, yeah, yeah. literally just work at home, yeah. <laughs> My name's Dom Delaney, I'm a uh, managing director and owner of a production company, 12th Man London, and I've been working in Soho since 1987, started as a runner. Crazy nights, hard work during the day, in the early days, easy work, easy money in the latter days, uh, and back to hard work again now, actually. Yeah, there's nothing, no, nowhere quite like it. Enjoy coming back here, every day. Uh, my name is Sally Scott White. I'm a TV production manager, um, and I've been coming to Soho probably for about going on 15 years. I remember leaving university and always wanting to get my first job in Soho. That was where I wanted to be always. Uh, my name is Ben Goldman. I'm the uh, new managing director here at Blacks. I think for me. Uh, Soho is one of the last bastions of creativity, 
and it's a real has it gives a real feel of an old London. And people here are very original. They're not gentrified yet, but um, I just think it's a real hub of creativity and originality, and still has a soul, whereas I feel many other parts of London do not. My name's Joe Mills. Um, I'm a hairdresser. Uh, I've got three stores in Soho. Uh, I've been cutting hair in the West End now since 1990, um, and it's uh, my life. I think Soho means so much to me from different levels. I think I, it feels like a village. I know enough people now, and I feel comfortable enough here now, that it feels like home. It, it, there's good, there's bad, it's changed, uh, it's changing constantly, but fundamentally to me, it, it, um, it still has a village feel. Hello, I am Mr. Whisper, um, aka Bal, um, a London street photographer, quite well known for doing candid street photography, and just moving into the world of fashion and travel right now. Soho to me has always been really special. Um, it's always been able to kind of accommodate my fads and hobbies and interests. On a hot summer's evening, you really can't beat sitting in Soho Square. I think, to me, I've been all over the world and sitting in Soho, London, is just a beautiful vibe. My Soho is a place that I've been coming for over 20 years. So for me, it was always bars like Ricky Tick in the kind of mid to late 90s. And it was always wanting to come to the WAG, but not quite properly doing it, or maybe just about. There's always change and there's always progression. New people, new things, new building. Yeah, it's kind of, there's, def there's definitely a change. Not. It's not always what we want or what we like, but um, yeah, I don't know how to combat it. I'm uh, Danny Wirebrow, and I run Smoke and Mirrors. My Soho. 20 odd years of uh, intense madness, I think. I think of having arrived with no idea where I was, what was going on, never heard of Wardour Street, didn't, didn't know what Berwick Street was. And I think, for me, I guess it's 23 years of memories, pubs, late nights. Yeah. I think the Star and Garter is as close as it would get to a go-to. Uh, anywhere less than 100 yards away that sells cold beer. And it's full of brasses. Horse brasses, not the ladies of the night. Really. But yeah, I've seen changes. I think there, there's elements of character gradually Going, I'm looking at this picture at the moment of uh, Raymond's Review Bar and Madame Jojo's and places like that, you know, iconic places like that, that that are going. So I think yeah, I've seen changes. I think that there's a lot more generic buildings going up. I mean, there's, it's one big building site really at the moment. But uh, I've seen changes. Some positive. Certain areas have, have cleaned up and, and aren't quite as, as rough as they were. Others are still delightfully grabby. Soho plays a massive part in the, in the overall delivery and fabric of, of Rue. I've been involved in Soho for over 10 years now. Um, from work to personal meeting my wife, Sally. Um, it's just been a, a go-to for the most part. When I'm probably the place I feel most comfortable when I'm, when I'm out. It was just an eclectic mix of everything and just people felt comfortable and you could see they felt comfortable. And, and, and I think that's... 99% of the, of the the label will ruse ethos in Carve Your Own in that it's not about elitist, it's not about being the best looking, it's just ha having that confidence and that um, and the awareness to be yourself. Well, Soho to me, even growing up up north, it was kind of this place of myth and mystery where anything might happen and, and there were no rules and anything was allowed and and so I've probably got a 25 year relationship or so as an area and as somebody who works in advertising you know, it was a very aspirational place to go but all that rubbed shoulders with well the sex industry and the best 
late night drinking haunts in, in town. Uh, God knows how much money I spent on on black voodoo and garlic and shots over the years. I've lost hours of my life in that place. Um, so yes, yeah, Soho has always been very, very special to me. That scary neon glow and wave hello. My name is Tim Arnold and um, I've lived in Soho for 21 years. Uh, I'm a singer-songwriter and also the founder of Save Soho. My Soho is probably the 90s for a start because that's when I moved here and uh, when I started uh, well, working professionally as a singer-songwriter. I, I signed my record deal in Soho, I gigged in Soho and partied. So that, that's sort of my Soho, and it's my roots really. You know, my grandfather worked for Paul Raymond, my mother was a windmill girl, and I didn't realise that when I lived here. And so that's like you've ended up in a place that you have a history, yeah. and a very fortunate place to have a history in. I mean, there's, there's nowhere else like it in the world. Personally, that's my first experience of Soho, 16 or 17, and that's kind of, what a lot of Save Soho is about protecting confidence in individuals who might want to grow up, grow up to be somebody like Pete Townsend or Eddie Izzard. And this is a platform, Soho is a platform for emerging talent, always has been, but talent that's a little bit different and unique and not mainstream, but sometimes becomes mainstream and it's the bridge between the underground and the mainstream and that's part of what certainly Save Soho is trying to save. Not everyone can play the O2. You have to have small places where things, where scenes evolve, um, couple, you know, British rock and roll, mod, new romantic, punk, uh, Britpop. You need, all, you need small clubs to turn into sort of global dominating scenes that become fashion, music, lifestyle, film. These all start in small rooms where people have ideas. You know, put that in a can and put it in a soup. No, you can't, you can't. You've got to be 16 playing a gig for the first time at the 12 bar and know that the Rolling Stones recorded an album over the road and you want to know and you want to ask that 16 year old how much that's worth. That is worth more than any amount of money at that time, especially if that 16 year old ends up having a successful career in music for the rest of his life and entertaining thousands or millions of people. That is the stuff that really matters. And unfortunately, the people in control and own property or land in Soho don't see that, don't see that. And, and it's, you can't blame them because I think the, the fastest way to finding no solution is by blaming people. It's a case of communicating. They're still human beings, whether they're landlords, politicians, councillors, um, they're all human beings, and if you if you can strike the right nerve, they may they may remember uh, what it's like to feel inspired. They're singing in the street. They're singing in